The philosophy of leading from above the line was developed by Dr. Theodore Ferguson based on his research on humanity in more than 70 countries. In leading from above the line, leadership development is understood as a process of self-development. And that self-development is centered around five sources of inner power, principal consciousness, purpose, emotional mastery, understanding change, and knowledge empowerment. Today we are talking with Dr. Theodore Ferguson, who likes to be called Theo, so this is how I will address him. And we're talking about the philosophy of leading from above the line, and the first source of inner power, which is principal consciousness. So Theo, tell us a little bit about the fundamental elements of this philosophy of leading from above the line. Okay, this is a philosophy that is based on the premise that we have tremendous potential within us as human beings. We have the capacity to do good and we have the capacity to do wonderful things in our life. Um, because as human beings, we are blessed or gifted with what we call the fundamental principles. These are principles that define our humanity. These are principles that make us human, and without those principles in our lives, we're not human. So we come into the world gifted with, treme with a tremendous potential based on, the, on those principles. The, prin the principles based on fairness, based on our human dignity, based on our ability to achieve excellence, based on as a potential that we all can achieve in our lives. And we are challenged to bring those out as we make our way through life and to become and to be um, responsible human beings. So it assumes that man is inherently good. Yes, that's a fundamental assumption. And we can easily um, test that. When we give people uh, the option of trying to decide whether or not or to recognize that there's a moral line and to determine on which side of that line they, they would like to live, what it is that will give them a true sense of joy in living and a true sense of happiness. They all tell us they want to be above the moral line. And no matter where we, we do this exercise, and no matter the uh, people's religion or cultures, everybody wants to be a moral being. Everybody got that desire to bring out the best in themselves. That alone says that goodness is something that is inherent to us. Goodness is something that we, we would all love to express as human beings, because it's inherent to our human nature. Right? So, so I hear you saying that this is a moral line. So above mm -hmm. the line is living in accordance with moral principles? Quite correct. And something I desire that we all have. Um, I know We live in a world in which sometimes we try to avoid the use of the word moral and morality, and we, but we can't run from it, you know, because fundamentally we are moral beings, and fundamentally we all have a sense of what is right and what is wrong. Fundamentally, we all can sense our goodness as human beings. I haven't met the human being who can't do that yet. So, and the challenge for us now is how can we bring out the best that we have within ourselves as human beings so that we can live in harmony with each other so that we can build better organizations, better countries, better homes, and a better world in the long run. So we're equipped with the potential to do it. The challenge is how can we do it? And this is where the philosophy of leading from above the line leads us to the five sources of power. Okay, it's all about strengthening ourselves internally. You know, we have a way of telling ourselves we have no choice and then we do things that we know we should not be doing. Yes, that, that Yeah, is, we that do that all true. the time. Yeah. And in other, in other words, we know what is right. But then we say we can't, we're not capable of doing what is right uh, because we have no choice. We have no choice for one reason. We're not strong enough. But isn't there also some truth in the fact that the systems uh, that we live under or we're guided by these control us to some extent? We allow them to control us. And that is great. Allow them to, because as human beings, we have the capacity to think independently and to be guided by our conscience. We all have a conscience. And our, our conscience speaks one language across humanity. No matter where you are in the world, 
The conscience gives us all the same advice. It recognizes right from wrong. So if we develop the ability now to respond to our inner selves or to live in keeping with our conscience, to live in keeping with what we know is right, we become better human beings. But the challenge for us now is how do we develop ourselves such that we have that inner strength to be able to do what we know we should be doing. Not what somebody else is telling us to do, but what we should be doing. Because in the area of, in the area of morality and conscience, every human being is equipped to, to know what is right and wrong. Nobody has to give you that. Nobody gives you your morality. That is something that is innate to every human being. Our challenge is to express it. Of course, we know a lot of human beings don't. And the, and the question is, why not? Because, simple, they don't have the inner strength to be able to do what they know is right. I hear you using the term strength and power. Mm -hmm. You know, um, are these really sources of power? Sources of inner power. You have to qualify that power. Okay. Sources that allows you to be able to make decisions in your own right. And sources that allows you to be guided by who you are internally, by that conscience. And by the way, the conscience will never lead you astray. So we have to be, we have to learn to surrender to our inner selves if we are to become better human beings. Because we have that inner guidance. We have been guided internally. One of the biggest problems we make um, in our lives is to allow forces outside of ourselves to take over. We call it the external reality. And then you live your life in relation to an external world, feeling to recognize that you have an internal world that will guide you. It could never lead you astray. All it does is helps you to become a better human being. And leading from above the line is all about helping to strengthen you as an individual so that you make better decisions in your life. Certainly when we look at some of the people who we term leaders, we often wonder, do they have a conscience? <laughs> yes, many people emerge um, at the top of the pile, put it this way, because they're not always leaders. Sometimes they use force or other ways, means to, to um, occupy the position. Sometimes it's not through the willingness of others that they occupy the position. Because great true leaders are those who are selected by others to lead them. And if you want to be selected by others to be a leader, then you have to be able to win the respect, the trust, and the admiration of people. And when you can win that voluntarily, the other folks around you can then elevate you to a position of leadership. But of course, many people occupy position, high, high office and they call themselves the leaders. But very often they're not leading anybody because they don't command the respect and the admiration of people around them. Mm. And leading from above the line, when we talk about leadership, it is about the leadership that you win through the, that is given to you voluntarily by other human beings. That's mm. true leadership. Well, let us talk a little bit about principle consciousness, consciousness now as yeah. a source of inner power. Yeah. And um, here is where I suspect um, we perhaps do not all share these principles. Are these principles shared across all of humanity? Uh, start by saying they can be shared across all of humanity. We all have that deep awareness or can have that deep awareness of what makes us human. You know, we talk about uh, uh, the whole business of fairness, right and wrong. You know, you don't give that to an individual, as I said earlier. That comes to you naturally. It's part of who we are. Of course, our cultures and other forces around us often try to blunt our ability to make that decision by ourselves. Because there's always somebody outside of you trying to tell you how you should behave and what you should be doing, when in fact we have the ability ourselves as human beings to, um, to determine that. Um, and so with that ability to know what is right and wrong, that makes us into moral beings. Because fundamentally we are all moral beings. We're all spiritual beings, fundamentally. And when we can understand that, we begin to be to anchor ourselves 
in the, in the area of being conscious of principle, that for those principles that define our humanity, that guide us as we make our way through life. And having a heightened consciousness of who we are is what principle consciousness is all about. It gives us a place that even when we stray from it, we can all come, come back to that place and re-anchor our lives, knowing that this is who we are as human beings and it's the right place to be. So it, forms, it gives a kind of cent a central spot in our lives. Mm. And even when we stray, we can come back to it and re-energize ourselves and continue living our lives. You know, it is worrying when we see large segments of societies um, behaving in ways that suggest that fairness does not reside in, the, in, in that society, or the sense of right and wrong, you know? Um, women being raped, uh, people being treated differently and with favor, you know? How, how, do we, how do we get out of this? How do we bring this principle consciousness to all people? Um, I like how you put the question. <laughs> It is for people to discover it. It cannot be taught. It's a self-discovery process of, of helping people to discover what they have, hence the importance of self-discovery. Um, so often we live our lives without paying attention to ourselves and who we are. We don't take time to look within. We spend a lot of time looking out and looking what is, at what is happening. And let me tell you, there are a lot of forces around us that, try, that will take control of our lives if we don't do it ourselves. I mean, from the, from the home, the forces, as a kid, you're born in the home, and the home tries to define you in a certain way, it could be good or bad. Um, and a lot of kids get into adulthood without realizing, wow, you know, I have the ability to think. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm blessed with this gift. I, don't, I can make my own decisions in certain areas. And, and leading from above the line through what we call self-introspection helps to take people into themselves to discover the beauty that they carry within them, to discover that they have that deep sense of what is right and wrong, to discover that they have a purpose, to discover that they have human dignity. I hear you using the term blessed. Um, is it that this philosophy is linked to religion in some way? No, not to religion. It is something that is linked to every human being, whether or not you have religion. Sadly, religion sometimes try to capture it as though this is something that is exclusive to people with religion. But this goodness that I talk about that we have as human beings, all of us got it. Every human being got it. We may not be alive to the fact that we have it. Mm -hmm. and, part of, and part of our challenge now is to help people to come awake, to come, come alive to their potential and what they can do. And so every human being, unless they have some serious medical problem, mm -hmm. has that capacity to determine right from wrong. Every human being has the capacity to become more conscious of principle and to have a higher sense of awareness of their humanity and to commit and strive to live in keeping with that greatness that they have within themselves. But so often we fail. So person by person, we are saying we can change the world. Of course. It starts with every individual. You may not be able to change everybody at the same time. But if you can change one at a time, it means we're moving in the right direction. That's what we are called to do. Now here's a magic question mm -hmm. that I started with at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, How do we develop this leadership? So how do we develop this principle consciousness? OK. Simple. Very simple look within um, and discover who you are. Very simple. You can't learn this external to yourself. You could only learn this by examining yourself. Um, the world talks a lot about meditation or meditative prayer. We prefer to use the term self-introspection, um, where you look within and discover what you already have and, and get close to yourself, get close to that little voice that you have within you. We all, as human beings, we all have a little voice within us. You know? Whether you're born in Vanuatu, or whether you're from the Fiji, or whether you're from Russia, or whether you're from Australia, or somewhere up where the Eskimos are, 
We all have that little voice in us, and that voice speaks one language, no matter who we are. And when we can give that voice an opportunity to express itself and talk to you, you begin to surrender now to that inner voice, which exists for one reason, to help you to live a better life, to help you to live a quality life, to help you to become a better human being. So it's not some formula you've got to learn and go out there in the rest of the world looking for it. It's already within you. It's a matter of discovery, self-discovery. And that's how you become more principle, more principle conscious, because you get in touch with what you already have within you. Now, when we fail to develop this principle consciousness, there are, there are implications and, and repercussions on our leadership. Um, <laughs> can you share perhaps one example? Where Tremendous have... implications. <laughs> For example, the world spends a lot of time talking about corruption. That's right. Um, practically every country in the world is challenged with that problem. Human beings who are selfish, who are greedy, who try to take more than is their fair share, and they very often steal that, steal money that is intended to be used for, society, for society's benefit, especially helping the underprivileged of a society. And we have a few people now who, who try to take more than is their fair share. And that is so because, and by the way, they know they're doing wrong. Eh? That's why they always try to hide. Look mm, at it. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. they always plead, not guilty. I didn't get. Or that it was not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> or somebody tempted them. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And folks, when we have a heightened sense of principle, a heightened sense of what is right and wrong, that little voice within us is going to talk loudly to us. And when that little voice talks to us, it brings us a sense of guilt or a sense of shame. Then you avoid doing certain things because you know it's wrong. But any time that conscience become, falls asleep or um, we allow it to become, let's put it blunted, then we become less conscious of what is right and wrong and then we are more likely to allow greed and selfishness and the ego to mm -hmm. take hold of us. We see the ego featuring so prominently in the downfall of so many leaders. Of course. Yes. Um, in fact, it's a major problem. It's about power. Power is intoxicating, you know. It gives you a feeling that you, it's like being, an alco being on a, taking an alcoholic drink and so on. It gives you a heady kind of feeling. Mm. And a lot of people find themselves being um, quietly um, succumbing to the power of alcohol or the power of greed. <laughs> Or the power of lust, another big one that destroys a lot of people across the world. Let's take one of the great leaders, one of the leaders who is indisputably great, and that's mm. Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how did he develop his principal consciousness, in your uh, opinion? Yeah, I like to use, to go back to a bit of writing by Mac Mirage, who was in prison with Nelson Mandela. Um, he spent, I think, about 12 years on Robben Island and had a chance to study him very closely. And he speaks about Mandela's ability to look at himself, to introspect, to look at who he is and to, as they say, hold a mirror to yourself. And that's never easy, you know. When you hold a mirror to yourself, you start to make a lot of excuses. I'm not really that person and so on. That's right. <laughs> but when you can look at yourself, it forces you to become more conscious of your, your greatness, your humanity. It brings out your dignity, it brings out your truth, makes you a better human being. And it plays out, and Mandela spent a lot of quiet time um, trying to strengthen himself. And you look at all the great leaders, if you look at uh, Mohandas Gandhi, you look at Mother Teresa, you look at Martin Luther King, you look at Archbishop Tutu, you look at the Dalai Lama, there's a commonality, that cuts across all of them. They spend a lot of time working on strengthening themselves, the daily practice for those folks. So many of the students are in businesses, in social, social enterprises mm -hmm. and so on. Um, does this apply across the board to business entities as well? Everybody. In business? Well, let me explain that by telling you there's only one morality in the world. We don't, have, we don't live in a world of multiple moralities, either right or wrong. So I had nothing called business morality or, 
or legal morality or medical morality is, or political morality is one morality. And so what we're talking about here cuts across a humanity no matter where we find ourselves. It applies in the world of business. If you're in the business of being in the priesthood, it's exactly the same principles, no matter where you are, right? And, you know, in the business world, we are terrified of the word morality. We often try to use the word ethics, so we find a lot of nice euphemisms to use. And I think we can help correct a lot of the problems in the business world if we begin to use the word morality a little bit more. Mm. Because that is where, that is, because it applies just as much. And what, what advice would you give to the up and coming young leaders, you know, of this world with respect to principal consciousness? Be guided from within. Basic advice. Listen to, to your inner voice. Listen to that inner voice. It, can, it will never send you astray. Okay. Never send you astray. So take time to understand yourself. Take time to get a good grip to what is right and what is wrong. Take time to let your conscience speak to you. And when you do that, you're going to discover your goodness. You're going to discover that as a human being, you know better than any other human being. Then it becomes easy for you to deal with people across religions, deal with people across the racial spectrum, or across the social spectrum, because we are all human beings. We are all equal. I suppose that increases your mindfulness as well of others. Well, yes? mindfulness is all about having, allowing your inner self to guide you, being mindful of who you are within, and then allowing that mindfulness to help you to make decisions in your life. There are a whole lot of different terminologies that people have developed mm -hmm. around this. But it comes back to knowing yourself and understanding mm -hmm. yourself better. Well, okay. that's good news to you, that yeah. at least we can say that all human beings have this potential to be good. We have to find the mechanisms to guide them to that goodness. Yes. yes. We all, the, the potential is there, without doubt. The question is, how can we bring that potential to the fore? How can we put ourselves in a position where we make what I call the right choices, so that we don't find ourselves saying, I have no choice. I have, by saying, I have no choice, you're agreeing to do something that you know you should be doing, but you make an excuse now. We say, I have no choice, so I have to do it. Oh, everybody's doing it. So nothing wrong. That's the other common one. Yeah, but not because everybody is doing it means that it's right. Well, thank you, Theo, for sharing on principal consciousness yeah. and helping us to understand what it means and to understand how to bring this out in ourselves. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kamala.